Here's your functional groups cheat sheet. Remember that carbon-carbon single bonds, double bonds, and triple bonds are known as alkanes, alkenes, and alkynes, respectively. Also, remember that an alkane, or a single bond between carbons, does not technically count as a functional group because it serves as the carbon backbone to the entire molecule, so that would not actually be considered a functional group. Also recall that whenever you see a six-membered ring with alternating single bonds and double bonds, like the clutch logo, that's called a benzene ring. But benzene is not the actual appropriate name to give it for the functional group. To name it as a functional group, you're going to have to decide if the benzene ring is attached directly to the main chain, R, or if, or if it's attached one carbon away from the main chain, which means it would be CH2R. If it's directly attached, it's called a phenyl. If it's one carbon away, it's called a benzyl. Now, those are just the names of hydrocarbons, but we can complicate these molecules a little bit by adding heteroatoms that are attached with a single bond to the carbons. And the name of the functional group will depend on the type of heteroatom that's used. So let's go through these really quick. Remember that if you attach a halogen with a single bond to carbons, that's called an alkyl halide. Remember that if you attach a nitrogen containing group to carbon with a single bond, that's called an amine. Remember that if you attach an OH group with, to a carbon single bond, that would be called an alcohol. Remember that if you take that alcohol, but you put an R group attached to the O instead of an H, now that goes in, that becomes an ether. Also, think about if you replace that O with an S, so instead of writing out OH, you're writing SH, that would be a thiol. And lastly, guys, if you were to use a C triple bond N as your functional group, that would now become a nitrile. Cool. So those are the functional groups that we can create when you're attaching heteroatoms with a single bond to carbon. But what about if you add a carbonyl to the carbon chain? Now remember guys that carbonyls are C double bond O's and they are not technically functional groups. So I would never call a carbonyl a functional group. The carbonyl can become a functional group depending on what it's next to. If it's simply attached to the carbon chain, that carbonyl will either be called an aldehyde or a ketone depending on whether it's on the outside of the carbon chain or whether it's on the inside of the carbon chain. If it's on the outside, meaning it's on the, the terminal end with a hydrogen coming off of it, that's an aldehyde. If it's within a carbon chain and there's carbons on both sides, that's a ketone. Now, where things get interesting is that if we combine the carbonyl with one of the heteroatoms that we already use to make a functional group, these functional groups get altered and get new names. So what if you take an alkyl halide and you add a carbonyl to it? Well, it's no longer called an alkyl halide, it's called an acid halide because it has both a carbonyl and a halogen on it. What about if you take an amine and you place a carbonyl next to it? Well, it's no longer called an amine, it's called an amide because you both have the amine functionality and the carbonyl functionality next to it. What if you take your alcohol and you do the same thing? It's no longer an alcohol. Now it's called a carboxylic acid. This is one of the most popular acids of organic chemistry. Finally, what if you take an ether and you add a carbonyl right next to it? That ether turns into an ester. And hopefully you guys can see that there are some patterns here where the names are very similar to each other, just depending on whether you have a carbonyl or not. Well, that was your four minute summary. For the full topic explanation, click on the topic below.